In this video I wanted to talk to you guys about the proper way to clear malfunctions and you know conduct reloads. It's basically the same. Uh, the basic principles are the same. So with that said, uh, the first thing you want to do is obviously you want to identify the symptom. So, so you're getting a symptom or receiving a symptom I guess you could say. So first thing is you're going to receive a symptom and that's going to be something you can see or feel. So like you see a piece of brass or whatever or maybe you see the slide isn't all the way forward or on a rifle. The more and more you shoot a rifle you can feel that uh, the bolt uh, only came back but it didn't go forward. Um, maybe you uh, maybe you feel that you know it went click but you can't hear the click so obviously there was no recoil when you went click or you get a dead trigger so it's something you see or feel whatever it doesn't matter what it is so I, I want to reiterate that this is just receiving a symptom that you see or feel so it's going in your brain and then what you should be doing first is once you get that the first thing that should be going through your head is to seek cover it's like okay so this can happen whether when you're out in the open responding to immediate fire and you get a, a malfunction or a whatever. Maybe your magazine is empty. Whatever the, the thing is, first thing you should be thinking about is improving your position. Seeking cover is the best way to say it. So improve your position. Always seek cover when you're actually putting you know, rounds down range for whatever the reason is, unless, you know, obviously flat range. But this is talking about a two-way range or, you know, fighting for your life. So always improve your position, whether that's uh, just getting on the move, backing up, or creating distance or whatever. So seek cover, seek distance, whatever the situation is. So improve your position, basically. So as you're doing that, you want to diagnose. But the first priority is seek cover, create distance, you know, whatever the situation may be. Uh, then as that's happening you need to diagnose. That may require a quick visual diagnosis. Notice that the word that I used was quick diagnosis. Not now we're transitioning to the gunfight to just staring at our gun. That's not what we're doing. A quick glance. The more experience you get with malfunction correction the more this is going to be instinctive and it'll actually this part can kind of merge. As soon as you get the symptom in your brain, you automatically know what to do. But the first thing you're gonna, you should know to do, is to seek cover, and then you get into performing your corrective action, whatever that may be. Whether that's tap and rack because the mag wasn't seated properly, because of visual diagnosis, you saw that the mag was hanging out halfway. Okay, so you tap rack or you lock back the bolt and take out the magazine and then reinsert, you know, whatever the situation may be, whatever the corrective action you need to take, you take it. Important principle right here. Eyes off the gun. It doesn't need your eyes. It needs your hands to do the work. Your eyes are going to be the most important tool to this part right here. This is a constant. Maintain awareness before the gunfight starts and during the gunfight and during this you are vulnerable. It is on you to keep your security. That means your head is on a swivel and your eyes are plugged into your surroundings. That may mean you're aware that there's a, still a threat out there but you're behind cover and if you can't see them they probably can't see you. You might be behind just some concealment but during that time you need to be checking your surroundings, especially if you're responding to an active shooter. You might actually fall victim to, I don't want to say fratricide or blue on blue, but you might actually get shot by somebody else who's carrying a freaking gun because you're not paying attention and you're just sitting there plugged into your firearm instead of being around and you see some other Joe Schmo about to pull out his pistol on you. And then as you were, what, <laughs> the reason why this is important is you can simply look over and you can yell friendly friendly as you're doing your process or whatever you can assess your surroundings and make a good tactical response and yes tactical response is a good you know um, a good way to put it because everything you do is based on tactics you're basically getting information and processing the best way to go about it that's all tactics are and so you're maintaining awareness while you are conducting a reload or correcting a malfunction, whatever the situation may be. That's being aware. 
you're maintaining awareness. I know my threat is on the other side of this barrier, but I am back this far and I have good cover. I'm constantly looking for people running where they shouldn't be running. I'm assessing the casualties. Maybe there's police coming up that, you know, just happen to be in the area or whatever. There might be some people trying to support so I can help join forces and be a hero or whatever. <laughs> whatever. But I'm kind of getting into making fun of people now. But, um, uh, realistically, this is the most important key during this whole event. So, yes, this is all important, but this needs to be done during the entire time. The only time we're taking our, our face away uh, is possibly during the diagnosis stage. But visual diagnosis comes after seeking cover. Seeking cover, concealment, you're, you start to get distance. Maybe you're like 15 feet away from somebody who's and gonna charge you with a knife. So you need to create distance. You might not be wanting cover. So you know, constantly being aware of things, maintaining awareness, and staying out of this muscle memory gorilla crap is probably the best. Stay plugged into your surroundings, and you know, understand that you know, in some cases, if you have an empty gun or you have a malfunction, sometimes you might just want to run. That might be the best thing. If you put some rounds into somebody and you got a malfunction and they're rushing you, you might want to run. That might be the best response as you're trying to clear. But And then you can take some visual time and, and correct and stuff. But at the same time, while you're running, you have to maintain awareness so you don't trip over your own shoelaces or, you know, whatever. So, or run in the walls or whatever. So, uh, with all that said, I appreciate you guys watching this. I know that a lot of people don't like these academic things, but um, this is something that I feel is very important and something that I'm very passionate about because I see people screwing it up a lot. They don't even start implementing this part right here, the seeking cover part, seeking cover, distance, concealment, whatever. So they don't even start that of improving uh, the uh, shooter's position. So that is a big problem to me. So. With all that said, I appreciate you guys watching. Go ahead and leave a comment below. Subscribe, share, and you guys have a good one.